So, hello people, how are we all doing? And welcome back to another match reaction. It finished yesterday at Plough Lane, AFC Wimbledon 2, Charlton Athletic 2. Nigel Adkins' first game in charge ends in a Desmond and a rather frustrating Desmond. We went from playing some really solid football, some really, really good football, so it looked to much the better side and looked like we would come away with a win. So then in the second half, doing the exact opposite, looking like a very, very different team, very poor, to be honest. And it was a schoolboy defensive error once again that has cost us and has led to Wimbledon grabbing a point off us, which, yeah, it's frustrating. So without any further hesitation, let's go ahead and dissect Nigel Adkins' first game in charge. Starting off with his lineup, he made absolutely no changes to the side whatsoever from the Bristol Rovers game. I actually think he kept the exact same bench, so it didn't change anything at all. So it was the same lineup. Amos in goal, Gunter, Famuwo, Pearson, Martinson in the defence, Morgan on the right, Miller on the left, with Paul Stokowski and Shinny in the middle, and Washington and Stockley leading the line up front. So yeah, no changes whatsoever, which I felt that he needed to do. Obviously, he literally just came into the job on Thursday, so he's only known the team for probably about two days prior to the match. So he felt he'd just keep the things the same. I think he kept the bench the same. And and he took the whole team to the game with him. We, you know, we saw Ryan Innes there. Obviously, he's not fully available yet. He should be very soon, hopefully by the Doncaster game on Good Friday. But yeah, he brought the whole team with him because, you know, as they say, together stronger, something like a team building, like a team bonding sort of thing. And we travel together as a team. So I really like that from Adkins. I thought it was a really, really good touch to uh, to bring the whole team with him. But yeah, in terms of his lineup, he kept the lineup the same, which I had no complaints about whatsoever. I think he kept the bench the same as well. So yeah, no changes whatsoever on that front. As for Mark Robinson's Wimbledon side, you know, I did recognise a couple of their players in their team. I mean, Joe Pigger up front, obviously former Charlton player, obviously scored against us at the Valley. A really good goal as well, so he was definitely going to be a threat for them. Although hadn't scored, I think it was in eight games for them. Uh, so he was on a bit of a drought looking to end that. Ryan Longman on the right-hand side for online from Brighton. Obviously a very good player as well. He's done very well this season. With them coming into this game being in the relegation zone, they'll be looking to get the victory. But obviously with us unbeaten in five will be looking to grab the victory and pile on the pressure a bit more on the rest of that top six. Now, on to the game. So, as I said at the start of the video, in the first half, it was pretty decent. It was a very, very good first half with some good patches of football in there. However, it didn't get off to the best of starts as Connor Washington, the man in form at the moment with four goals in three games, came off with a hamstring injury. Literally 30 seconds into the game, the ball was played over to him. It, was quite a, it wasn't the best of balls in the world. Washington tried to keep it in play. He's then had a swing at it to keep it in play and ended up pulling up. Adkins took no risk with that whatsoever. He took him off straight away. Dealane Jaisimi came on, which was quite an interesting one to see that he didn't actually bring on another striker, brought on a winger. Uh, but yeah, it was gutting to see Washington come off. But he did seem, you know, from the way he was walking off the pitch, he did look like he was walking okay. He looked like he was walking fine. So hopefully that it was only just a precautionary substitution to bring on Jaisimi. But yeah, Washington come off, which was a big blow for us at the start. And it was... You know, it wasn't the best of starts, I have to say. I think for the first 10 or so minutes, Wimbledon were slightly on top. You know, they were just a little bit better than us going in. But eventually, it was the away side, the Addicts, that took the lead through Jaden Stockley, the headmaster himself. He can only score headers. It's absolutely ridiculous. Albie Morgan was in the centre, played the ball over to Miller on the left-hand side. Miller managed to run down the wing, got into a decent position, crossed it in on the left foot, and then Jaden Stockley produces a fantastic header. At first, the commentary team and myself included were thinking that was an own goal but it went down to Stockley's goal um, I've been very very critical of Liam Miller's end product lately and his final ball but he finally managed to get himself an assist and do something right and he did something with his left foot which I have said that he doesn't have to be honest with you I think he's very very uh, one footed likes to cut inside on that right foot quite a lot but it was nice to see him actually do something with that left foot however the lead would not last very long as Ryan Longman would respond for the Wimbledon team probably a couple minutes later actually about two or three maybe four minutes after that literally Ball was played into Joe Piggott through the centre. It was quite a long ball out from the back. Piggott got the ball. He laid it off to Longman. The defence was just all over the place, really. And Longman just had so much time to bury it into the far corner on the left foot. It was a very good finish and a well-worked goal. But again, from a defensive point of view, we've got to be doing a lot better there. We've got to be doing a lot, lot better. But 
After Washington come off and we brought on Jai Simi, we sort of changed the team around quite a bit. Jai Simi went over to the right-hand side, Miller stayed on the left, and then Albie Morgan pushed into the centre. You know, originally he was starting in a 4-4-2 out on the right. He then moved into the central position, sort of like an attacking midfielder in behind Stockley. But then at some point, it changed again. With at some at Sometimes you'd see Jai Simi up front with Stockley. Sometimes you'd see Miller up front. Sometimes you'd see both of them in behind Stockley. So I didn't really know what it was at some stage. We just kept rotating, but... It worked. We did recover our lead through none other than our substitute, Dialang Jaisimi. His first goal for the Addicts. So happy that he got his first goal. And it was a pretty decent goal as well. Long ball was played over to Liam Miller once again. Miller cut inside well. He laid it off to him on his right foot. Found Jaisimi. Jaisimi took a touch and buried it past Zanev to make it 2-1. Very, very composed. Decent finish from Jaisimi. And... Yeah, very happy for him. Very, very happy that he got his goal. And I think under a manager like Adkins, Jai Simi is going to thrive. You know, a player like Jai Simi really is going to thrive. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. We went into the break in front and it was very, very good. I have to say, it started off very, very slow. But we did grow into the game, you know, we did see quite a lot of that long ball tactic for the opening minutes, which kind of resulted in Wimbledon being a bit better than us in that opening minutes. But when we made the change in formation and changed the tactics, you know, Jaisimi on the wing and then sort of sort of went in behind Stockley along with Miller at some stage as well. And Morgan progressed into the centre. It was really good. And we played some really good patches of football in there, you know, some good passing, some good movement. Miller finally shown some end products, been very critical of his end product lately. Two assists in 20 minutes, which is just what you need from him, really. Jai Simi with his first goal for the club, Stockley with a very good header and yeah, it was looking good, it was looking very very good and I think that after that slow start we did look the better side and we looked very very decent, however the second half was well the exact opposite to be honest with you, we sort of just shut off, I don't really know what it was, I found it quite strange that you know, we seemed to go for a bit of a formation change in the second half and the width that we had sort of disappeared. And it, it did s sort of look like that Miller, who was at times alongside Stockley in the first half, that's what we ended up playing in the second half. You know, Miller at some stage was up front with Stockley and then Jai Simi was played in behind the two, those two up front, Miller and Stockley. Forster Kasky went to a defensive midfielder position and then Shinny and Morgan obviously made up the central midfielder. I found that quite weird considering that the width in the first half worked a treat and we were playing really good football but yeah the formation change was fairly strange um and yeah Wimbledon did look on top you know they were playing a lot better for us and it did look like that we were hanging on for dear life for that 2-1 lead and eventually it went tits up it went tits up in the most disastrous and the most horrific way possible yet another defensive individual mistake this time from Akin Famuo and this is quite possibly not, not even quite possibly. This is the worst defensive error we've had this season. And um, again, how many times have I had to say it in these videos? I know I keep saying it. It's getting boring for you lot now. But it's a joke. Goal kick. Ben Amos takes the goal kick. Takes it short to Akin Famuo. Famuo sort of just stands there. He doesn't really know what to do at this point. He's got Amos next to him. He's got Pierce. Or he could just smash it long like you normally would expect someone to do from a goal kick anyway. But... Famuo just sort of stands there. He doesn't really know what to do. And eventually he makes the decision to play it back to Van Amos. But he literally taps it. Doesn't even make it to Amos. There comes Ryan Longman. The scorer for their first goal. Comes out of nowhere. Picks up the ball. Bang goal. 2-2. Two, two. Second of the game for Longman. An absolute gift of a goal. And it's pathetic. Famuo. It's his first mistake this season. In, let's face it, a very good season. It's his first mistake in a very good season. He's been very, very good. But you can't be making that sort of defensive error. I don't care who you are. I don't care how good of a season you're having. You don't make that sort of mistake. I know some people were blaming Ben Amos. You know, some people were saying, oh, we should have just kicked the ball long anyway. That's not Amos's fault. It is not Amos's fault in the slightest. That's Famuo's fault. And he has to take 100% responsibility for that. You do not get the ball inside your own box, stand there not knowing what to do, and then decide to play it back to the keeper. You tap it to him. What are you doing? Drill the ball away. And just get it clear. We're already under pressure enough as it is. And now we've thrown away our lead. And Wimbledon, as I say, gifted with that goal. And they draw back level. And to be honest, not really much happened for the rest of the game, to be honest with you. Wimbledon, again, they just looked the better team. You know, we just looked like we were struggling to compete with a team in the bottom four after time in that second half. 
the final stages of the second half where both sides ended up hitting the post and could well have won it. The first one was by Joe Piggott for Wimbledon. You know, he got the ball on the right-hand side, had a shot at the near post and cannoned off the post. You know, really, really close there for Wimbledon. And then in additional time, the last three minutes of the game, Chucks and Ike, the substitute, he come on for Liam Miller after the Canadian had had a very good game. And EK come on got the ball on the right side, managed to get through somewhere, find himself some space. He absolutely rifles it, but like Pigger, it smashes the near post and then it comes back to someone. I think someone gets a touch on it. Shinny has stood there right in front of the ball, but someone managed to get a touch to it and Zanev manages to catch it and yeah, just scramble to safety really. And that was the end of the game. That was the end. AFC Wimbledon 2, Charlton Athletic 2. But that second half was just such a contrast from that first half. You know, it, first half we were absolutely fantastic. And the difference in football that we were playing in that first half compared to what we've been playing for weeks and months under Lee Bowyer was ridiculous. And then in the second half, the formation change didn't really understand that. That is something to question with Adkins, but I'm not blaming Adkins for that game at all. I'm not blaming him at all for this game, just to be clear. Yeah, it, it's, it's frustrating in that respect because, you know, even though Wimbledon had been piling on on the pressure, we were still in front. You know, we were winning the game 2-1 and then you do something like that and you gift them a point. That's what's happened. You know, we've gifted them a point, but... In fairness, to be honest with you, I think we'd have to say that the draw was a fair result. First half, we were the better side. Second half, they were the better team, you know. We just could not cope with them in that second half. And it looked like we were struggling against the relegation-threatened team, you know. It, it's just, for a team that's fighting for promotion, it's just unacceptable. Anyway, positives. Positives to take from that game. We're unbeaten in six now. We're unbeaten to six. The unbeaten run is extended. You know, we're still in the top six. Sunderland drew with Lincoln, I think it was. Hull drew with Shrewsbury, I want to say, I think it was. Ipswich lost to Portsmouth, so that done us a favour. So, you know, results did, in a way, go our way. And it is frustrating, you know, that we couldn't take advantage of that and get the victory, you know. Our next game, obviously, as I mentioned, is not until Good Friday. So, Adkins has a solid week and a bit to get to know his team a bit more. To understand things and to really get the gist of what he wants to do with this team. And as a matter of fact, it was reported that he's actually watching an under-23s game soon. Could we expect some of the under-23s lads to feature? I don't know, but, you know, that's certainly a part of Adkins' management. You know, it's certainly a part of what he does as a manager, bring through young players. So I will not be surprised if he was to, you know, bring in some of the under-23s already for the latter stages of this season, which is why, which is probably why he brought on Jai Simi, to be fair. You know, Jai Simi's still young, 22, put faith in him as a young player. And, you know, was rewarded with a goal. So that's probably why he done that. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what Adkins can do for the next few games. And if he is to bring some of the under-23s in, that will be interesting. But that's the positives. Two points dropped against a relegation-threatened side. You know, it's not good when you look at it that way. Our form, even though we are unbeaten in six, you have to have a look at it and you have to say that we are inconsistent. Our form at the moment from the unbeaten run is win, draw, win, draw, win, draw. That's our record. And it is... It screams inconsistency. That's why it screams, you know, and it is disappointing that we just can't turn those draws into wins. You know, really, we should have gone back-to-back -back wins today. Our next four games are against Doncaster, Lincoln, Sunderland and Ipswich. All four of them are around us and they are in and around us. And we need, you know, if we want to get top six, we need to be competing with these teams. It's as simple as that. We have to compete with these sides. And that is why... This international break comes at a very good time for us, you know, because Adkins can get to know his team. He can decide whether to integrate the young lads or not, bring in a couple of them, and he, he can get the gist of what he's doing. And also, Ryan Innes and Alex Gilby, maybe Adam Matthews, maybe Connor Washington, they'll be back, and hopefully he'll have, near enough, a fully fit squad ready to choose from. So... It comes as a good time for us. The international break does come at a very good time for us. It's just a shame that that result yesterday against AFC Wimbledon was, you know, it, it was the way it was, you know. We really should not have dropped points in that manner, especially not with that defensive error because it's absolutely disgraceful how many times we've made defensive errors this season. It's ridiculous. In terms of Nigel Adkins for his first game in charge, I think he did a good job. I think he did mostly well. I think the first half after Washington come off, we really did well, you know, that change, you know, bringing on Jai Simi, put faith in Jai Simi, it was a very weird change for me, I was surprised he didn't bring on a striker, but it worked, and it really did work, and I thought he was really, really good, and I thought he played some really good patches in football, so I think for the most part, we did well, and I think that if we keep that up in the first half, like we did against Wimbledon, if we keep playing like that, then we're going to be looking alright, you know, we're going to be looking very much alright, but... 
There's still nine games to go. This is where the tough run of form comes in. And this is where we need to start competing with the big runners. You know, we're playing pretty much everybody in and around us. So we need to be getting these results and piling on the pressure on the top six. Because obviously they do have games in hand. We need to let them know that we're there. And hopefully they'll slip up in the games in hand. And we can try and cement our playoff position. But it's going to be a tough one. So that's it for this match reaction, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you're new around there. And turn on those post notifications so you're notified of when I post. Again, thank you all so much for the support on the channel lately it's been absolutely ridiculous the amount of people that have come over watched my videos you know and have been subscribing lately we're already on 2.85k subs which is absolutely ridiculous if we can get to 2,900 subs very very soon that'd be awesome we're on the road to 3k so if we could get to that that'd be incredible what do you guys think of the game let me know in the comments below it's international break now comes at a very good time for us it's a good opportunity for Adkins to get to know his team will he integrate the under 23s who knows who knows only time will tell this has been Tyler Ronaldson have a nice day and I will see you all next week for a new video. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all then.